Um, obviously, it's an exciting, very busy time of year here to, to talk to these young kids whose dreams are about to come true, or so they hope, through the draft. Uh, as an organization, what specific things are you looking for when you open up a conversation with a kid? Just so you're, I know you're trying to get the, the truth out of them and, and not really a staged answer. Well, I think it went through a phase where there were too many stage answers a few years back, and I think the agents' groups realized that it wasn't doing anybody any good. And I don't know where the result came that people said, look, we've got to convince these kids just to be themselves. But it's really flowed back probably the last three years uh, where, you know, and each team is a little different in the way they do it. Some it's a little bit more of a psychological foray into the player's mind. For us, it's a chance to sit and chat very often they've gone through an extensive interview with the regional scout mm -hmm. so this is a follow-up so we'll have that regional scout start and say look I know I've asked you a lot of these questions before but for the benefit of the group we'll just go through them mm -hmm. I think we try and keep it pretty light uh, you know we talk to them about their families and just a chance to sit down for 15 minutes and get a feel for a player that that might be a part of your future I a bit of ignorance on my part, but when you were making your way into the game and you had your first conversations with NHL clubs, were they anything like this at all? Nowhere near. I was an undrafted free agent, who, yeah. <laughs> and the combine is all fairly new, it, yeah. it, you know, and I say that. Um, the idea of bringing in the top players to test, it's all so different now than it was. It really is. It, first of all, these kids all know each other, mm -hmm. and they've all competed in U-17s and U-18s right. and worldwide tournaments, and it's shocking to me even through the respective leagues, they do literally all know each other, these, the, the, the high-end kids. And, and so they look at it as an opportunity to get together, and you'll see them chatting out in the hallways as they wait for interviews, and, and they room together and you know, as a process, and, and then as it narrows down, they might switch roommates and be with someone else. So it, it, it's a good chance for us to get to see them a little bit. Um, still shockingly surprised at how well they all handle themselves. I mean, almost to a person. Uh, you know, they've been through a lot to get here at this age. A lot of them have left home at a young age, 14, 15, 16 years old. And they've been on their own a little bit, albeit with billet families. But the sophistication of the group as a whole and, and knowing what they want and what they've already preparing themselves to do to play in the National Hockey League is still astounding. Well, I was going to say, some of these kids have already said, I mentioned to Bo Horvath, I said, you know, here's, you've already had conversations with Mark and Dale Hunter. There's kids who've already had conversations with Patrick Waugh, be them short, quick, whatever. They've, as you mentioned, they've not that that prepares them for anything specific, but next time they come and they sit down and meet Dave Poole, and they've they've had conversations with NHL guys before. Yeah, they have, and they're and they're comfortable with they're it prepared. without a question. Yeah. They are really prepared. But I think it's it's a great, you know, I, I think we're still really spoiled in hockey mm -hmm. because of the. Most of these kids aren't a product of their environment, like maybe they are in some other sports. And there's a humble nature to a hockey player. I think if you talk to media people that covered the different sports, we're still very fortunate in hockey, the humble nature of it, whether it's the long drives to the rinks early in the morning, or uh, there's a lot of very well-parented kids that I've met over the last few days without a question. So a little tribute to the parents here in the group. Yeah. Uh, there's always talk every year whether people think it's a deep draft or not. Uh, that, of course, won't be determined sometimes till years down the road how deep a draft was. But do you get a sense compared to, let's say, the past five years that there's a lot to be had here? Well, I think part of that is the exposure these kids get. And you see them play in world tournaments. So I think the diamond in the rough is fewer and farther between because of the exposure. I know when I flip TV on now on a given night, I've got an HD package that has all the OHL games, and I get WHL and QHL games. So there, there are less surprises. You've seen more of them, and you've seen them perform at a higher platform. You know, our guys see them at the Halinka in a world tournament in August. They see them at the U18 World Championships. Some of these kids have already participated in the World Junior Championships. And so they, they do get such an exposure, and you've seen so many of them perform at a high level that it's harder to say, oh, we've got a, a hidden little gem here. I know the games are highlights, but is this a highlight, again, going kind of back full circle at the beginning of our chat, where you're seeing someone who's got that wide-eyed look and, again, remembering even undrafted, you still have that wide-eyed look the first moment someone gave you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're here to do is give someone an opportunity. Well, you are, and, and it's funny because one question we ask is, you know, favorite teams, and geographically everyone has their favorite team and, or a favorite player because maybe that player's from your hometown. You know, you get somebody from hometown, and now that player plays in Pittsburgh or wherever. 
um, you know, Nathan McKinnon might have a favorite player because he grew up in the same hometown as a certain Pittsburgh Penguin. Yeah. And so I've never heard of him, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear the other one too. Don't worry. <laughs> but it is, you know, it, it, it is, and they know the amount of work they're putting into it to date, but also the amount of work that's ahead of them. It's all just starting right now. So, how many kids? Do you have a planned number of kids that you meet here through the week specifically, or is that something that can change as the week goes on? You decide you want to interview somebody else? Yeah, it's all preset by the NHL if you do want to interview somebody because these kids are all slotted. Right. A number of them are, are doing a number of different interviews, and you still have an opportunity to meet them at the draft. Some of them are local kids. We can take advantage of that. Uh, or they may train with an agents group that's based out of Toronto. We can take advantage of that. So we generally get to everybody we want to before the draft. Thanks. Appreciate your time. More than welcome, Dan.